The Porsche 904 from Monogram, coming up next on Monster Hobby's What's in the Box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model car builders. Welcome back to another exciting What's in the Box episode as we're going to look at this 1964 Porsche 904 from Monogram. And I got a special treat at the end of this video. We because I never get to build these things, just review them, I actually went and did a little YouTube searching and I found a cool little what it looks like when it's built from Peter Milicento. So at the end, I'm gonna link his video so you guys can go click on it and check it out. Anyway, so while we're sitting here, before we begin, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Let's get this thing up to 100 likes so that it'll elevate up in Google searches. And then if anybody wants to see what this looks like, they can find it easily. So now let's go down where the rubber hits the road and get to our table to take the lid off this amazing model kit. And now let's relive those glory days of racing in 1964 as we take a look at the Monogram 1964 Porsche 904. So it says on the side of the box here, which we'll just go back a little more. Choose the model that's right for you. All Monogram model kits are authentically detailed but require different levels of skill for assembly and decoration. These definitions will help you choose which level is best for you. One, two, or three. Well, this kit is saying it's skill three. So that means it's right at the top of the difficulty level. Porsche 904. Technically, the Porsche 904 was a grand touring car which had been built to meet F FIA requirements. It scored a memorable victory at Targa Florio, an endurance race over some of the roughest roads through the mountains of Sicily. This 125th scale model is molded in silver, metallic charcoal, and clear with plated parts and black vinyl tires. So if we look here, of course the side of the box is the same picture as the top. But here we actually have three pictures of this car. Number 86. So there it is. And there's that Porsche rear engine motor, the four-cylinder. And then our side of the box here is the same as the top again. So that brings us to the front and now we will open up the lid, move that to the side, bring up our instructions, drop the decals, move the box over here, and now it says, bought at Zellers in Lynn Valley for 677, April 2nd, 1993. The model came out in 92, so I bought this thing one year after it actually hit the shelves. So here it gives you a whole big write-up about the Porsche and what was going on when it raced. The Porsche Carrera GTS Type 904. Okay, so I'm not going to read that. You'll have to get one of these yourself to read it. But there are the paint colors in all the different languages and an old phone number to phone monogram. Okay, so there's the engine, which is quite a lot in there. It even has a valve gear drive housing. So there you go, highly detailed. So let's open this thing right up. This is a four page fold going on here. So there you can see the fan for the motor going on there, or the blower. And then we have that going together and dropping into the pan, the lower body. Now Porsche built their cars much like Volkswagen because well, Ferdinand Porsche designed the Volkswagen. So you see a lot of similarities. They are all rear engine mounted on a pan. This one has a bit of a frame to it. And then of course we go to there. There's like the oil tank and the rear frame, all kinds of things going on. We have a roll bar. So you're kind of building this car from the frame up, just like the real thing. Right and left rear wheel brackets, as well as shock absorbers and springs going on there, and then your uh, rods and everything your, for your A-frame. The left and right rear disc brakes. <laughs> Holy smokes, I'm having troubles today. There's a tie rod. Um, shock absorbers going in there. 
And then of course we have our posable steering, which is really nice. Then we get back over here, there's some pedals and the Ford bulkhead and battery. Then we got a front wheel stabilizer going in there, a platform uh, steering wheel and shaft, and then you get your firewall window and the firewall, because remember the engine is in the, behind the driver in the back. Then we've got center door consoles, which will be really nicely molded because they are separate. Our seats and our dashboard. And then we get this race ready fuel tank. Now we flip it over to side B where we get into our body with the glass and windows. And then the headlight covers and the headlight glass covers. Then the body drops onto our chassis. Then we get into the, the front compartment door. It's not the hood. <laughs> There's the hood in the back with the vent plate. And then we have these nice fully functioning uh, hinges that'll be going up and down in your car. And then the support plates. See this is where it gets a skill level 3 in. Uh, the tail lights in the back of the car. And then that whole hood hinge assembly deal. A little air scoop to pop in the side. And then there goes that. I mean look at that mechanism there. That's some intense stuff. And then of course we get our rear wheels popping on and locked in with a little retainer clip. And the last piece is the exhaust pipe. Whew. And then we get into the two different cars that they have, number 11 and number 86, which are all on the decal sheet. So now we get to close this down and close that up and we'll be able to look at our parts next. Here's the first bit of our components and these are the parts that are molded in a nice silver color. As you can see we've got a really detailed fuel tank sitting here and these are the engine components for the flat four and we have our nice body. The body of this car is molded in many different pieces so you got to work with different components as you go along and then of course we have got some of the suspension components. And now if I turn this up here, you can see the nice crisp detail in the body. Everything is there nice and well. And very cool looking of course. Now by turning this over you get a little bit of a little bit more detail into the engine components here. And uh, these look like the front spindles, or maybe the rear spindles here. So, quite nice detailing on this. Now we have the Porsche underbody. As you can see, there's some nice little vents in here. You can see some rivet detail going around the underbody. And this looks like a little trapdoor kind of deal. Uh, here we have, at the right and left hand side of the engine block, a couple of the scoops for the bottom of the headlights. Not sure which. And then if we turn this over, you can see some more detailed parts here. Another one of these little pans. There are some mold marks in here, which of course can be fixed with your number 16 hobby blade. And if you look a little more carefully here, you will see that this says copyright 1992 monogram models, all rights reserved. Um, this kit came out in the 60s as well, so originally that might have said 1964 or something to that effect. So again, some very nicely detailed components. So now we carry on with more of our silver pieces. And these are all nice little components here and there. I have to look up what they are in the instructions. These of course are retainers for your wheels, or maybe even some of the hinges. But anyway, here is the 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 hood of the car because the engine would be underneath this but it's really like the trunk on North American cars of course but look at the nice crisp detail there on that cover you can see all the grills inside again it's very nice and if we turn this over you should see some more detail here of course we've got our mold marks which you have to take out with your number 16 hobby knife and the detail on there is pretty smooth inside. A bunch of the suspension components and whatnot. And I do believe this transmission left and right. 
But anyway, as you can tell, once again, some really nice cool looking things on this skill level 3 kit. Now this piece I'm showing you here is our final of the silver colored sprue. We've got some rack and pinion type steering here which was pretty new for the era, 1964. Here's some of the brake or the wheel backings plus the disc brakes. And this is the inner fender aprons for the uh, the trunk part which is there. And then we have our hood here. You can kind of faintly see a, a bit of a depression in the hood. This broke off, but see that X frame in there? If you turn this over, you actually see the fireproof mat plus that X bit. A little hole right there <laughs> for, um, of course, some air intake. But uh, this, you can actually get rid of this by doing a little cross sanding on the part and uh, if you're going to paint this silver and everything, which I'd recommend. Uh, you can also use some filler in there just to smooth it over, but of course you'll have to sand again too. So I just moved the hood out of the way because that broke off in the, in the parts box. So let's just lift this up into the camera a little bit. Now, silver of course is reflecting off my lights here, but there's a little bit of that fireproof matting or a fiberglass mesh maybe. That's what they're trying to go for there. Um, again, bits that you'd have to scrape down with your number 16 hobby blade. If we turn this over, you can see the nice detail on our disc brakes. They include a caliper. And uh, there's a back. Okay, so this is the rear of the car. And uh, there's where the taillights would be. And this looks like a little piano hinge right in here. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. Alright, so the next components we're going to look at are charcoal colored. So now we get into the smaller components which really makes this kit the skill level 3. So here we have the shock towers and a little brace for in the engine compartment. A whole bunch of little braces and hoses and struts. And of course those would be going into our frame. There we have our coil springs, the rear differential half shafts, the pedals, the steering wheel, exhaust pipes, steering column, uh, and of course more suspension components and braces. Uh, what is this piece? Looks interesting. I do believe it is our firewall. Little hole there for the steering wheel to go through. Back of the dashboard perhaps. There's our battery right there. Nice detail on the posts. Right there. <laughs> okay, and uh, some pretty cool stuff going on for sure. Okay, moving on to these charcoal components. We have some stabilizer bars here. There's our dashboard with uh, nice instrument gauges going on. Center console. These here, I know they're off camera a little bit. They're uh, left and right body panels for the interior. And then here we've got our other engine components like the fan shroud, the, the belt. Uh, these little bits are um, parts of the suspension components. And I was a little bit wrong. These things with holes in them, they are for the mechanism, operating mechanisms to open up your hood and whatnot. And of course, this is the shroud here that goes over top of this. So I'll just lift this up into the camera here so you can see that nice dashboard. Let's see, get the focal plane right. Ah, it's going to be a little bit off because I had to zoom in. I'm trying an overhead camera mount and the uh, camera's a little bit far away, but anyway, you can see the nice gauge detail here as well as a bunch of operational buttons and toggle switches on this side. So again, a very nice detailing. Turning this over, you can see more of the detail on this fan here, which is quite nice, and the shroud, and of course our fan belt. There's those inner door panels with the little glove box kind of armrest bits in here, and again, a bunch of those mold release marks. So get out your number 16 hobby blade. Now I'm going to show you the final two charcoal pieces. They are kind of small. This, of course, I mean the sprues. Sprue trees. Okay, so they're kind of small, but 
you know, they're the last of the charcoals, so you've got your right and left hand side for the frame here, and then a little bar in there, probably the roll bar, I think. More of these little buttons for retainer clips for the hood hinges and whatnot. Then here we have the rear window. This is actually the firewall because the engine is in the back. The other piece was called a forward bulkhead. So, of course, this would be the back with the firewall where the engine goes. So there's some nice detail on the seats. They are a little bit plain, but there are some sink marks here. So this will have to be filled with putty. And unfortunately, there's one on mine right there in the middle of the seat. So that's not much of a help for me. Oh, there you go. Left and right. Of course, the rear bulkhead. Again, more of those little little mold release marks on there. So they have to be all taken down with that number 16 hobby blade. Oh yeah, you can see holes here and here. Care when you flip the seat this way, you got them here and there. Almost mirror images of sink marks, which I've never seen before, but anyway. So quite a bit of nice detail on here. Again, sort of got a fiberglass look. And then uh, you got a little window frame in here with rivets on it. So again, quite cool for that component. And now looking at these frame rails, you can see, of course, these, these uh, prototypical rectangles that are on there for strength. And turning it over, a uh, bit of a crimping in here, as they might say. Again, for added strength and whatnot. It's very nice, very good detailing on there. And it would be really cool on your model. Now we have our clear plastic components. We've got a windshield. These are the covers for your headlights. Then we have our left and right hand side glass and that nice little rear window. The parts are really good in this kit. They're not uh, scratched in any way, shape or form, which is of course what you want with clear glass. Now we get into my favorite part of all model cars, and that is the chrome tree. But unlike the AMT model kits, they only give you enough chrome to do the one car, so <laughs> no extra custom components or anything like that. So here we have the four prototypical Porsche wheels, which would look nice with a little bit of a black wash in there, just to get all those little holes and details to pop out. We have our front headlights, now these don't have any clear glass lenses in them so you would have to tint them with a little bit of clear with a drop of blue in there or something like that just to make the detail come out then so two of these should be the tail lights which you'd have to paint with some Tamiya red clear red then we've got some more little chrome bits here there's the um, uh, what do you call them? the intakes for your four cylinders and uh, bunch of other nice things, chrome mirror, of course, and some bits and pieces for wires and hoses and all kinds of cool stuff. And I do believe these are the cylinder heads. But again, I got the camera zoomed out, so these little pieces would be the cylinder heads and whatnot for your engine block. So again, some nice chrome, nice detail, and uh, very stock. And now to get the rubber on the road, Monogram has given us these, well, fairly generic tires, actually. They're not Goodyear's or BF Goodrich's or anything. They, in fact, have no name on the sidewall. Uh, the nice part is they have a, a fairly decent tread going on here, which would be reminiscent of cars from the 60s. Uh, tires from the 60s, I should say. Now, these, these wheels have also come in their 1960 Corvette kit. So I do believe that these tires are from a very long time ago in this whole era of that kind of tire from Monogram. And finally we have our decal sheet here. Now there's a red stripe for your hood and a gray one. The number is 11 for the side doors and number 86. Of course we get our Porsche logos here. So now the kind of curious part in here is I can't find on the instructions who gets the red stripe and who gets the gray stripe. I am assuming that number 11 gets red stripe. And actually, if you look on the box, you'll see that 
Okay, it's blurry, but number 86 here has the gray stripe. So th that would coincide with this going down this way. So there's your uh, number 11 would get the red stripe. So again, very simple looking decals, but well, very necessary for the race. And that concludes our review of the Monogram 1964 Porsche 904. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing unboxing of this 1964 Porsche 904 by Monogram. And I hope you will enjoy taking a look at what it looks like when it's all built up on Peter Millicento's video, which will be coming up on the end screen of this video. So next week, we're going to be looking at another exciting car. So don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with all your friends and family. And until next time, pound that notification so you'll be the first one to know about it. And let's get this up to 100 likes. All right, we will see you next week.